I'd like to analyze one of the reasons why countries might want to trade with each other in a neoclassical framework. In particular, we're going to look at differences in tastes as the basis of countries deciding to interact with each other in an international context. So as I say differences in tastes, it's basically differences in the demand conditions, what consumers want in the country compared to another country. Uh, we're going to be assuming for ease that the two countries have identical technological capabilities, they have identical factor endowments, so they've got the same amount of capital and the, and the same amount of labor. That's not because this is uh, particularly realistic, it's just we want to eliminate those as complications in analyzing whether or not countries should trade with each other simply on the basis of taste. In the Ricardian model, you can't get that. But in the neoclassical framework, we're going to see it. And we're going to have it very simple with two countries that produce two goods, good X and good Y. And importantly, X is going to be the capital-intensive good and Y is going to be the labor-intensive good. So first of all, let's take a look at the production possibility frontier for these two countries. It's bowed out, neoclassical framework, and both countries share the same technologies, they say share the same resources, so they both have the same PPF. So we're really just going to essentially put one PPF on top of the other. So on the, on the supply side, if you will, they're exactly the same. But let's assume that A has a higher demand for X than does B. And B has the higher demand for good Y. So they just like different things. Now first of all, let's take a look at the autarky situation. Let's depict that. So country A, is, when, in, when it, before it trades, is going to depend on its own resources to produce good X. So they're going to have relatively higher demand for X in autarky. And country B is going to have relatively higher demands for Y. Now, these are going to cause differences in prices and differences in costs in the two countries. Now, if you recall, we can look at the slope of the PPF as the opportunity cost, as the relative price for good X. Uh, there it is for, for country A. And there it is for country B. And right from here you can tell that the relative costs for X in country B are going to be higher than in country A. And that's basically given by these two angles. Low, a small angle, low relative cost. So in autarky, the country that doesn't like X very much, B, is going to have a relatively low price, reflecting the, that lower demand, and a lower cost of producing it. Furthermore, we want to look at the use of a tool that we introduced in a different lecture where we had the relative price of, of good X on this axis, relative cost of the inputs on this axis, and this negative relationship. So we can depict the initial circumstance in terms of factor prices and output prices over here, but it's using this information. So country A has the relatively high relative price of good X. And a low cost of labor. They have high demands for X, which are going to drive up the cost of capital to make the capital intensive good, low demands for the labor intensive good, hence low demand for labor. 
country B, just the opposite. So their initial price for good X is low. And they're going to have a relatively high cost of labor because they're producing lots of the labor-intensive good Y to meet domestic demand. So here's the, this autarky situation, and we have these different relative prices. We've got these different relative costs of the inputs. And I should note that these costs of the inputs in autarky are different because not because the supplies of labor and capital are different, but the demands for labor and capital are different. Now let's imagine that these two countries start to trade with each other. Consumers in country B have a low price, low demand for X, and they say, let's sell that. Let's sell that to the people who want it. You're going to have X leaving country B and going to country A to the great dismay of producers of X in country A, because they now have to uh, compete with these lower priced uh, products from abroad, and just the opposite for good Y. So the demands are going to tend to create opportunities for exporters and opportunities for consumers who want to buy the good. And as they trade with each other, the relative prices are going to tend to come together. In fact, they will come together if you have no trade restrictions of any type. So they come to some point in the middle. Some common trade price that they both now use in, in making economic decisions. And also, we tend to see the relative price of the inputs coming together, along with the common price of the final outputs, we've got a common relative price of the inputs. So let's think about that for just a second. In country A, they are producing more of the labor-intensive good and exporting it. That increases the demand for labor economy-wide, tends to bid the wage up. By the same token, they are importing the capital-intensive good instead of making it at home, lowering the cost of capital raising the relative wage for other reasons. In country B, it's just the opposite. They have a lower demand for labor as an input because country B is importing the labor-intensive good from the other country rather than making it themselves, and the cost of capital is tending to rise because they're producing more of the capital-intensive good. So, as the relative prices of the final goods come together, these relative prices of the inputs come together as well.